I'm not looking at these things for any particular reason, but the dogs in Mexico had much larger <laughs> re- reproductive organs than dogs. Because they're not neutered. I, 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 yeah, the math, but like no one was like, okay, these dogs got hogs. Not one of you guys <laughs> thought these dogs got hogs. Put your food in your hand, Jared. What's no. up, guys? Welcome to episode 62 of uh, this sweet baby boy dropouts podcast. Jared, put, put the food that you have under your table. Let I the people see. I don't know what you're talking about. Jared. Put it up there. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Jared, no. What? <laughs> Jared is currently consuming a peanut butter and jelly on a tortilla. Um, because we don't have any bread. We just went so to you, Mexico. Uh, we're so going to talk about that. But is this because you mix? What am I mixed? supposed to use? Baked beans. Oh, and then Indy's consuming baked beans, <laughs> and it's like the morning. Jer- uh, John's here as well. John, tell him what up. John's back. Hi. Can we, can we just, before we get into any of this, we got too much to say. Just hit us with that sweet, sweet intro music. Oh, yeah. Don't forget, like, last week where it <laughs> plays that, like, minute 53. Boy, do we have we don't some have John's sayulita washboard. stories. Wait. What's up, B-Words? Welcome back to Dropouts, episode 62. Uh, we all just got back from Mexico last night. I understand that, but we're brushing past the fact that one of our people we used to call our friends, not anymore, obviously, after this, is eating... A peanut butter and jelly and a tortilla. And I, John, can you please grill him with some questions? And move the mic a little closer if you get a chance. <laughs> Don't look at me like that, John. Why? That's a disgrace. <laughs> From coming to the authentic Mexican food that we just ate, those beautiful, beautiful El Pastor tacos, the nice. beautiful, beautiful burritos we ate. Great pronunciation. And then you eat that. Uh huh. <laughs> He's a man of. So you're kind of mixing American culture with. Hispanic culture. That's exactly. beautiful. So you're really, you're blending. I am what America is meant to represent. We are a melting pot of the world's cultures. Okay. That is what I am representing right now. You're going to. And you guys, what? You're really just going to stand on this pedestal right now and preach to us about. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you guys. I don't like the, the, that you the guys sound you just make. I'm so sorry. Because the <laughs> peanut butter is just stuck to the roof of your it's mouth. Fiat. I feel like a dog. That, like, like with a double C. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The fact that you guys are tearing me down for blending the best parts of two cultures together, I think is disgusting and vile behavior that this world needs to get rid of. I'm on Jared's side. Thank you. I love a good speech. Look, you like, guys aren't cultured. No, I just have one question. Yeah. Corn or flour? Flour. Uh, well, well flour. Cause okay, then that's, that's, that's excusable. Is it? Yeah, I mean, bread is. Th- thank you. Also, bread is okay, flour, yeah. John. We I don't have, have never any bread. liked. I've never liked corn tortillas. I've always been just basic white girl and like the flour tortillas until Ugh. I went to Mexico <laughs> and we got those tacos. Oh, he's got another one. How many of those do you have <laughs> under your desk? <laughs> well, they're not. That. I do, I hate how portable it is. It's so efficient. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, yeah, it comes in really handy. And then I learned how to roll them, like watching the people at Chipotle. So. Anyway, we start. We went to Mexico. We flew uh, into a different country. If you've never done that, it's like flying into the same country, but this one's different. So we we land. It's like flying into the same country, but you don't have cell phone service. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh uh, no, we did. Okay, so what was the point of that? I was just trying to make a joke, and then she ruined it. I Sorry. Know. Gotcha. You I just got, got an it. international SIM card, baby. J- just yes, and. So we flew into Puerto Vallarta, and then we flew flew. Sorry, we drove She's- out flexing on us that she can roll her r's i can and then we uh drove about 48 minutes to uh not about nayarit was it Nayar- exactly 48 exactly 48 minutes, minutes. Yeah. i started a time was it nayarit or nayarit was, the, was the state, state. okay we're, we're in sayulita was the city we're in um and oh my gosh was it the uh, honestly one of my favorite places i've ever been like and the experience that we had was Amazing. It was very touristy friendly, but like not. It wasn't a resort. No, no, no. It wasn't a resort. It was literally a small town that like is very friendly to tourists and very like common to tourism. But like also. We had a beautiful home in the middle of the the jungle. jungle. The jungle. And then in the mornings we'd wake up and just see. Cows in our front yard. Cows cows outside of our door. You can roll the clip. We have clips. So we'll send them to you. But literally open your door and then there's cows. 
I, I saw a cow in Van Nuys once. <laughs> Did Just you really? down the street? No. Oh. <laughs> um. John, I, I was I was very invested. I was like, wait, I want to know how the cow got to Van Nuys. Me too. But that's the whole thing. Like, a cow wouldn't show up outside of your apartment in North Hollywood. I know. I, I it, was, it was beautiful. It was very interesting just being in the middle of nowhere. I didn't have service. Everyone else seemed to have service. So I didn't I, have service either. It was really nice. It was being only it was literally only Jared and I that had service because we have international phone plans. It was I really don't though, or at least I didn't think I did. Who well, are you with? Verizon. Sometimes it's included depending on your package. Would you look at that? Regardless, we had an incredible time, and I think it was really time. I really, my phone, the wherever we were, didn't have where we we're staying, didn't have service, and our Wi-Fi was the slowest thing you could ever <laughs> think of in your life. So, I think a lot of that trip was really just a escalator. snail on um, a reverse escalator. Or Jerry. <laughs> okay. What? You said the slowest thing I could think of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So slower <laughs> than that. Got it. <laughs> I think that. <laughs> I was wondering, I was like, what the fuck is he, this is like, someone sent a clip of, there was just like, I wonder what the hell goes through Zach's mind, and it was our New Year's episode, and like, we're literally 45 minutes into the episode, Indy's telling like a, a really deep story or something, and you just go, Happy New Year! Well, I uh, want it, well, it was close to the New Year, and I didn't want anybody to forget. That's true. Wait, so it's slower than a snail on a backwards This is escalator. not the point of the story. It is, though. <laughs> Got it? Cool. We were all able to disconnect from our cellular devices more often than we usually do because I feel like I'm definitely somebody that is very addicted to their phones um, and I'm constantly just like searching or looking and the first day was very frustrating because I was trying and I was like, this isn't going to happen. Um, so we had this little golf cart that only Zach and John could drive. Um, I could not. Who was the better driver? Or say oh, it now. I didn't even try. Me. Who was the better driver, me or Zach? You guys can both put in your votes now. Um, be so honest. I think you guys are about equal. I would. Uh, I don't know, John. I, you only drove say, once. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to say Zach, considering you got us out of that embarrassing mess. But he also put us in that embarrassing <laughs> mess. <laughs> wait, which embarrassing? No, no, no. Mess you guys wanted talking? to go no, to the that beach. That was Look. us. Okay, first okay. of all, first of all, wait. It's, it's, okay, it's rainy season here, so it's, it, it is. It's pour, raining it like is every day, absolutely every night. pouring rain in uh, Sayulita, as the kids say. We were say. really lucky that it wasn't rain. It was only raining. The nights, mm -hmm. which was at probably the best decision ever, considering one of the nights, and we'll get there. Um, but anyway, the the roads are super. Are a lot of them are just of, made of dirt. They're made of like dirt. Oh, those dirt yeah, and those like roads. um stones. Like, yeah. So when it rains, it floods, and it's it's a tough time to get down. The, it's not like asphalt like here. So um, you got to adapt. Well, uh, a local told it, told us if you take a left down this one street, you can go straight to the beach. And they're like, walk. Oh. They did say walk. They did say, hey, you're going to want to step there. You know, you're going to want to be able to they're move like, over hey, things. You can walk over this. Place. And I were like, oh, we're like, okay, cool. And us, we're always up for a challenge. We decide to take the golf, the, cart. The golf cart that was gifted to us. And if we ruined, we'd have to pay thousands of dollars um, <laughs> down this this road. And it was uh, Pothole City, muddy. And then we are all wearing matching... <laughs> As bright as day, like, Sayulita t-shirts. Like we were supposed to be wearing those shirts today, and that's why I have this one on. We're all I wearing forgot. just like the brightest Puerto Vallarta shirts that you can think of, like yellow, Jared orange, will put green, up some pictures. neon green. I have a video of that entire thing, so I'm going to have to airdrop these all to you just so you can the viewers can really just feel how embarrassed we We were. looked like a-hole. We um, looked like just the worst people. Power Rangers. Yeah, we just look like the worst tourists ever. So we're bumping down the road with tourists. We're we're waving at people. We're saying hola, and um, you can so tell that people are like, oh god. They're like, look at these stupid people. They don't know what about they're about to get themselves into. So uh, we drive the golf cart into um, some thick mud uh, down a steep hill. I heard some Zach, we're gonna die. Zach, please don't do you this. I heard a lot of that. And, but I was like, dude, dude. I like dude? to th I like to think I took the world by storm and I grabbed onto ten and two and I really just drove us. Not to the beach. To a dead end. And then we immediately turned around and we never went to the beach. And there were there were a couple locals down there who you could just tell were like These stupid. These assholes. These dumb asses. And we're like so embarrassed. We're just like we took a U turn, went all the way, and then we went into town. We made really good friends with Alejandro. Alejandro. Um, I doubt you'll ever see this, but you were our favorite person in Sayulita. Mine was Rita. <laughs> So John. the fu the funniest thing was we are in the middle of nowhere where obviously internet access isn't great and I assume dating profiles 
Dating apps aren't a big hit there. <laughs> Needless to say, John, you downloaded Hinge. Okay. And um, how many people were even on the app? <laughs> there were six people. And, <laughs> and how many did you swipe right on? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> and you matched with one. I matched with one. And, and the entire trip, John was trying to meet up with this beautiful woman named Rita. Yeah, who she is was from Surfing Finland. in Sayulita. She was from Finland. She learned 90% Spanish. She, sa- she says a 90%. She, that's where she said she was at. That's that's a decent percent. I just, it didn't, this time it didn't line up for us, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think that is? Well, I was like, hey, where do y'all go out here? And then she said, I don't go out. <laughs> so. And uh, I quote, John said, that turned me on. Once again, in confidence, <laughs> <laughs> it turns you on. That look, I was, I wanted to say, like, hey, like, you know that song "House Party" by Sam Hunt? Yeah, yeah. like, we, you should have invited party. her to the house. A fly just is there a fly in here? Oh shit! A We're fly back. just landed on me, Indy. What does that mean? Oh, oh no. God. <laughs> Dude, okay. Oh, no one say I what it means. Let it let it breathe. Let the audience no, figure I'll, it out. I'll, I'll, how no, are they going to figure, figure it out? Figure that they out. don't need to know. No, they don't. There, there is mystery that is interesting. You can say something ambiguous and they'll say, oh, why did the fly land on John? And, and everyone say, oh, like. <laughs> they don't need to know this story. I think they need to know. No, they don't. No. <laughs> <they know. laughs> no. This is the most emotion I've ever seen you uh, exude. I, I just get pretty passionate about my <laughs> secrets. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. Whatever. We went to this taco stand, Alejandro. I love you. Uh, we ordered some really good El Pastor tacos. <laughs> nice. That was a and good time. And we ate them. We ate them. Okay. Can we just get into the main <laughs> night? Oh, we went for my birthday, obviously. Um, I, it was the first time I was able to legally drink in anywhere. So that was really exciting. Um. On my birthday night, I would say I got... You drank... Uh, Considerable as, amount. As a, cu- sh- a couple sangrias. You, c- you drank a birthday girl's amount. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Look, always classy, though. Well, no. no. We went to a karaoke, karaoke bar that night oh, and that ate so it up. I don't know if they hated us or they loved us. Well... I mean, you guys screamed Britney Spears songs for way too long. Yeah, the guy at the bar I was like, do you know Britney Spears? He goes... Hell yeah! And we both just started singing Hit Me Baby one more time. Jared, do you have a clip? Oh, baby, I'm baby. sure I do, yeah, but we probably get clips. copyrighted for playing it. Whatever, but imagine, I'll throw it, imagine. I'll throw it in the podcast silently just to show um, the I'll, incredible performances put on. I really want to be that stuck-up guy now that's like, I can't eat tacos um, anywhere because, else because I had them in Mexico and they were way better. So I'm... If you see me at your local Taco Bell, I'm telling off the manager. I'm telling them exactly that. I will <laughs> never be able to eat Taco Bell ever again. I mean, I already effing hated it, but. Whoa. Well, well there goes our Taco Bell sponsorship. That's fine. <laughs> well, last night when y'all dropped me off, I walked to Ralph's and I got a taco kit. Oh, wow. Oh. And Wait, what's in a taco kit? Like taco shells and taco okay. seasoning. Because gotcha. like, you beef. missed it? Yeah. And then I got rice and beans. Okay. Mm-hmm. And like normally, I don't. I just make like open the can of beans, and I get like a packet of Ben's rice. Uncle Ben is that the brand? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and uh, it's just easy. R.I.P. And uh, it's <laughs> <laughs> my God, what Spider Man? <laughs> I know. Okay. And then I made it, and I was like, "This is so bland." <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> Compared to what we have, he's evolving. Oh, we gotta speak about. Th- Oh God! We should. Uh, we they wanted to eat some food. Um, one of the nights. Um, most of the time we go out into the town to eat, or we would. Uh, one of the nights we actually had a chef come and cook for us, which was oh. incredible. And I want to preface this by I have never, I haven't experienced um a plus luxury before. You know that was luxury. Living in the country, I do. I, I experience it every day, but I've never experienced it at this level. Um, you know, I'm used to a packed lunch. Um, if my mom's feeling the right way. <laughs> um and this this was <laughs> what was it when you come home and your mom says make a chef boy rd like, <laughs> okay okay don't oh, look at her Just oh no me. you know when mom's tired when she's like listen you're gonna have a peanut butter and jelly that you're gonna make yourself and we don't have jelly so go figure it out <laughs> and we don't have bread so tortillas <laughs> <laughs> so tortillas. maybe that's where it came from 
is me having to improvise as a child when my mom had bad days and we had no Chef Boyardee ravioli. I hope your mom never cabin. has a bad day again, Jared. I hope so, too. Wait, I feel wait, like the wait. best way to accomplish that is me and her. No. What all did we eat? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So, whatever. We had... Uh, John was like, okay, we had leftover gnocchi in the fridge from... Oh, my. Oh, this this recipe. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> we had we, leftover... Do we want to talk about the chef anymore or no? I am the chef. Excuse me. <laughs> I cl- my, my recipe clearly... We had leftover chef. gnocchi in the fridge, like, n- with no sauce, and John was like, let's make gnocchi. And everyone was like, all right. I told them a recipe that everybody loves of mine, which what is my... It? The tomato pasta that I... Everyone loves... Everyone, right. we had all the ingredients. <laughs> Wait, what? What was your? Give us your recipe. Tomatoes, minced garlic, butter, half and half seasonings, which I will keep to myself. Um, and normally there's shrimp in it, but we didn't have shrimp, so we're just gonna use the gnocchi and just have it as a sauce, right? You were like, no, we're gonna make Alfredo. I was like, we don't have <laughs> any of the ingredients for Alfredo, and he was just like, we have half and half and the smallest bit of Parmesan cheese, and I was like. All right, dude. You do you. You're leaving on the And bacon. Simple. Sorry. And there bacon. You go. And bacon. You're basically so he, making carbonara. So he cooks the bacon. There's bacon grease in the pan. And he goes, here's the sauce idea. Half and half in the bacon grease, salt and pepper. You were going to leave it as that. Well, I, let me explain. I was following a recipe for chicken Alfredo online, and they needed chicken broth. So you, you thought bacon have- grease? <laughs> yeah, oh. bacon grease. So it was bacon Alfredo. That's a great idea. Thank you. You're an improviser. That's my issue. That is the issue is my ratio. The issue is the ratio. No, it wasn't. It was too much grease. No, 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 no. Every no. fat John, party John ever. Is <laughs> no, he's not. John is you two are the something. two worst cooks I've ever met in my life. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Oh. There's no need oh. for name oh. calling here. Are you kidding Whoa. me? Whoa. Have you ever. Stop it. Have you ever had John's gumbo? <laughs> Have you? Oh, um, yes or no? Are you talking about the chicken dumpling? Gumbo? No, no, no. I've had those though. Like and dumb, did you like, like it? Chicken and dumplings are pretty dank. That was actually pretty good. Okay. Um, regardless though, let's Jared, just... still one of the worst chefs though. Jared, what the hell? It, Look, you burned Andy, pasta a couple days ago. I'm gonna make I've... you that cake that I tried to and, improvise. Okay, on. but that's you being a good baker. I I stand I will, on. Okay, I'll cook gumbo. We will do gumbo tasting fine. on an episode. I bet you uh, guys. Fine. I will come back with a pot of Said gumbo. Fine, if I must. <laughs> and we and you will fine. And I I will cook you my pasta, and I will win. Okay. Um. Regardless, what if we all have a cook off? We all have to bring our own dish. Oh, so I'm gonna win. Bet no, I'm not. No, I you're kid. Not. I can. Oh, hey, fucking. Hey, I'm sorry. Hey, I did I'm you hear sorry, me I'm initially sorry. say no? I'm, I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. As if you I should wanted be. to, I could <laughs> wipe the floor with all of you. Dude, what you with what with your skyline cinnamon chili? You're gonna wipe the floor with a peanut butter and jelly tortilla. <laughs> is that what you're gonna do? That's when I have no time and we have 30 seconds what before else I'm gonna hit record. Do you know on how to podcast. make? I once saw you literally eat beans and broccoli for dinner because what? I don't. You act like I make this because I want to. It's out of necessity. I His bank account is set up that way. I use tortillas because <laughs> we don't have bread. I ate beans and broccoli because I didn't have chicken and rice or anything else to put the beans and broccoli with he's an improviser i'm an improviser and i don't have standards when it comes to my food and you have a nice smile thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you i don't okay. have standards when regardless, it comes to my food regardless john was like yeah this will be the sauce and it got to the point where zach and i were like no i tried to do john, it gently i was like john <laughs> it wasn't working okay. john okay. Look, go I'll, sit down I'll be the let us fix this I'll so be i'm the first to admit it it wasn't working and, and i love that you admit that you are a man of admitting and i love that would you like to admit anything else directly in the camera maybe a dirty dark secret about a fly no okay <laughs> 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 okay anyway so i Zach so, steps in i so, i see this pan it's got bacon grease and milk in it <laughs> oh. and i say i said to myself Zachary, what what can we do here? That's that's my what accent. Um, was that? That's a white guy trying some other accent. Okay. Uh, All right. Ratatouille steps up to the plate. I throw a little, I throw as much Parmesan on as I can find in the place. Bah, bah. I throw some half and half. Hello. Some um, paprika. S- paprika. A lot of paprika. Some red chili peppers. Minced garlic. Minced garlic. I say I'm like Zach. This needs to be thicker. We flour. Flour. Boom. Seasoning salt up in there. Seasoning salt. Yum. <laughs> Um, parsley. Was but it parsley, parsley or is it Italian, Italian seasoning? A lot of it. And we, mix, and we mix and we mix and we mix and we mix and we fill. Slowly and we throw, it starts to be thicker. 
That was on. Thank oh, you. flower. We put flower in there too. This well, is I like an IG right model after she gets a subscription to a workout plan. It just keeps getting, getting thicker, thicker, baby. And we finally get it on the warm gnocchi. Everyone's gathered around. This will never be good, I hear whispers. Oh. Hey, I thought it would be delicious. It was actually pretty decent, so you're welcome. Thank you. It, I thought it was. Y'all took my initial bacon Alfredo to the next but level. Can I just say something? We're all ragging on you for, for the, the bacon grease milk concoction. But what I want to say is we would have never had that delicious meal if you never took initiative. Thank you. That's true. And I think we know, need more people in this world. You could even have had if, tacos for another night. Even if you <laughs> fail, well, it, was to, it was rain. pouring rain. We couldn't go Oh, to town. yeah, we couldn't. We had to oh. fend for ourselves. We, that's true. It was a very this motivational night. speech. I, was about to get. I understand that. And I'm cutting you off. But <laughs> Can we talk about this night? Wait, I want to hear the motivational which, speech now. <sighs> wait, which, wait, which night are we talking about? The gnocchi night. The first gnocchi night or second gnocchi night? The second Nookie night with that we just made food. The night we made it. Yeah. This is the night that you guys got shwasted. I, whoa. The point, John, she just wants to get to the point where she gets to make fun of us for being drunk. 100%. What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Absolutely everything. Like. All right. Zach. Zach. I was cognizant. Jared makes this thing called the jabroni, right? <laughs> and uh, Shout out. Uh, PB Ale House in San Diego. Mission he had Beach. he had like a couple. That's of the, a right place, right? PB Ale House. He had like the cup, a couple ingredients of what you need for a jabroni. So basically, he just made a really big mixed drink this time. Can you explain what he it was? He had in it? a pitcher this big. Um, it was not that big. I'm okay, sorry, okay. it was bigger? not that big. It was literally. It oh was my gosh, Jared! Big. No, it was way bigger than that. It was as big as your bear. Yes, it was. I, I have it was videos. As, it was as big was, as the bear. It was not as big as the bear. Yes, it was. We all. Jared, we all. That was pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it in this video. Ashley's drinking it. Um, Wait, so we're giving all these listeners some great recipes: bacon Alfredo, <laughs> jabroni. <laughs> okay, so tell, tell them what's what in was it. In the jabroni, um, it was. Uh, I had a double shot of vodka. <laughs> a double, double shot. Of- shot. Hey, this is my drink. Thank okay. You. Hey, stop cutting him off. I didn't talk about your flour recipe, your bacon Alfredo recipe. Because um, you didn't know what was in it. I, I heard you guys putting ingredients mm-hmm. in it. And who found the extra Parmesan in the cupboard? That was a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It was like four flakes, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay, so it was a double shot of vodka, a double shot of gin, Holy hell. a double shot of rum, <laughs> and a double shot of tequila. And then there was some, uh, there was, whatchamacallit. Like a whole oh, seltzer. That, 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 lemon lime I seltzer that I put in there to enhance the flavor. And then I used a lemon lime, lemon lime um, electrolyte in there. It so was, the electrolyte canceled it all out. It really did because then I woke up the next morning and I felt completely fine. Jared drinks this whole pitcher. Um, John's not I far himself. behind him with things he can find around the house. Well, it's my drink, of course. But, I drink but it Jared by got a little bit more lit, as the kids say. Also, John, no, John's getting pretty sh- drunk at this point. I, look, I, but you I, you hold it better. I you were holding it better until a certain point. What did I do? Hold on, hold on. Um, Jer- Jared comes to me crying, and you'll see it in a clip he's about to play. Um, and why were you crying, Jared? I, should we just let the video speak for itself? Sure. We can talk about it after. But. Oh, I figured out my favorite color. <laughs> Green and not yellow. <laughs> not yellow. Green and not yellow like this. All right. That See, is green. Let's rock. That is green. green. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. That was definitely yellow. That was yellow. Thank it's you. It's more green in person. Why are you crying? <laughs> You're crying? I thought it was yellow for so long. <laughs> Where's the dough? You threw at me, man. <laughs> oh, John. Oh, I thought it was yellow. First of all, you thought what was yellow? <laughs> you thought your favorite color was yellow for so long and you were crying because you it's, learned it was green? It's green. Wow, I was no, really, you're really crying. crying. Oh my god. Yo, I'm a good actor. Crying now. And he needs it for oh my god, TikTok. wait, why is he oh, drunk? That's why. So you're not drunk at all. Why is he really crying? No, of course I'm not drunk. <laughs> 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 oh, it's the silent <laughs> laughing for me. <laughs> it's cream. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> what? Did this whole time we thought it was yellow? <laughs> what? 
<laughs> what is this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's happening at God. this point. TikTok thinks I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> Wait. You're TikTok alcoholic. knows you're an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> there is no alcohol. Ah! Whoa. Oh! Ashley. Ashley comes to my rescue. Really? So, right. wait, Ashley oh. said there's no alcohol? Yeah. In no, no, no. She no. was, she, you saw it in the video. She was sipping she it. She was saying that you couldn't taste the alcohol. Look. Here's the deal. Which means there was none. Because I poured that one myself. I made that drink myself, and I know what I put in it. I also saw you make that drink, and I saw. I have a video of you telling me what is in that drink. I think Ashley meant she's a she's a heavyweight. Yeah, so she didn't get drunk once. She's a- definitely Ashley, a heavyweight. I think Ashley just talked mad game. And you think and she's she actually drunk the whole time? No, I don't think she was. I think I made a couple drinks that she did not drink. Mm. You oh. think she, didn't feel like drinking. she did the whole? I, no, I get no. I, um, yeah, no one has to drink if they don't want to. But it's like if you're like, yo, it's like if I w- was like, like Zach, you don't drink, which is so cool. Like you don't have to drink. <laughs> what? Sorry. No, I, it's it's just funny that I'm not. I was. I'm not shaming her for not drinking. No, no. It's but just the like, entire time she's like, I can drink everybody under the table. Yeah, it's like you tell me you can drink me under the table, but you don't even finish a whole drink. Oh. That Ooh, it's like call her out. You know, uh, yeah, I wish she was here. We need a place. we need a shot for shot contest between no, you and Ashley. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. Okay, that's John's fine. like, listen, Jared just got hard just from hearing that. He's like, shot for shot. Oh, <laughs> you guys can do it. I don't like shots. Oh. I like little mixed drinks like that. Oh, you do like little dainty drinks. I do like little dainty drinks, dude. Give me a drink with an umbrella in it. Oh, dirt. What was your favorite part of just being in Mexico, John? My favorite part about being in Mexico. Um, my favorite part about being in Mexico. Uh, <laughs> I feel like you're giving like a presentation in right. high school. You know how like, but you didn't prepare, and you just like have a <laughs> blank slide. You're like, because it's all in here. You know how like you're on a train of thought, and yeah. then like something else like comes in, and then like just overwhelmingly whole, whole takes your mind over. Brain just shifts. I apologize. No, it's fine. Um, Mexico. <laughs> um, <laughs> my favorite. I th- my favorite thing about Mexico was experiencing something like completely different than i've ever experienced before the flavors of the food the like trying to like trying to use what little spanish all of us know that was also my favorite part because no one like everyone in mexico was so kind like the locals like they understood that we didn't know spanish that well but they would stay with us they would they would like he kept uh, Alejandro didn't know a lot of English and he kept being like repeating the words until I understood the context of it. If that makes sense, like he kept being like, well, "How do you say when in Spanish?" I don't know. When? Whatever. Donde is where? Whatever. He kept like saying it, and I kept so being we're close. like, <laughs> I kept being like, okay. I kept being like, okay. All right. He's saying this. What would it be? What would it? Be? When? 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 When are we? Co- October? And he'd be like, Ah, you got it. And I'd be like, Yes. Like. We're figuring it out. That was definitely my favorite part. The people were very, like, I understand it's Everyone a tourist, very sweet. touristy town, so, you know, whatever. But they were all very, very nice and, like, very welcoming, and and they can cook. Yeah. Man, can they cook. Because when you hear, like, uh, have you ever had authentic Mexican food? And it's like, you always hear that, and you're like, how how much different can it be than American food? And it is, like, night and day. Like, you, yeah. it's... Yo, the burrito so we good. had. I literally, I have thought about those tacos. So I every did dream about those since. tacos, actually. The world is racing to get back to normal and start meeting up in person again. But after the year we've all had, getting back to feeling normal takes a lot of time. I know personally going back into the world has been filled with a lot of anxiety and, and stress about- You just had a panic attack yesterday. I did. And it's been filled with a lot of anxiety and stress and feeling like I don't really know how to re- interact with people again. So It's very, very scary for a lot of people going out. Um, we all talk to our friends when we're experiencing issues, but they don't always give like the best advice we need. Sometimes we need a trained professional. And I know um, you being in therapy, it has helped you immensely with dealing with with your emotions, with people that have actually like seen it before hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. They make you feel a little bit more seen and a little bit more quote unquote normal. The most common thing when it comes to mental health is just the constant feeling that you're alone. But the fact of the matter is that over 50% of Americans deal with mental health issues every day. So you're the farthest thing from alone. And honestly, reaching out to any sort of professional help was the best advice that I've ever uh taken you know so you're not alone you're in this together and um yeah 
Uh, the reason I really like talk space therapy because it's it's not as scary as you think. They have licensed professionals that are there to help you that have, like I said, been through it so many times. And it is such an asset to your physical being. Like a lot of people think working out, like I, I'm working out my full body, but you're not working out your full body until you also work out your mind. And I think this is a great way to do it with Talkspace. And you can do it all from your home through, you can start off simple by doing it through direct messages, um, do live video chats with them. Um, it's not as scary as like having to go to an office to an environment that you're not completely comfortable with. Whether you're a parent, a student, a millennial, or someone that is just having a hard day, Talkspace can provide the support and help you need to feel better in just a single message. Talkspace works around your schedule and at your convenience. Whether you're experiencing depression, anxiety, or other problems, Talkspace is the number one online therapy platform to help you sort through anything at any time. Start feeling better with a single message. Match with a licensed therapist when you go to Talkspace.com and get $100 off your first month with promo code DROPOUTS. That's $100 off when you use dropouts at Talkspace.com. Thank you, Talkspace. Back to the episode. I uh, I tried to talk to one of the servers, and I was like, Como estas? Que es su nombre? You trying to get her number? He no, would have if. Like we, like, we couldn't talk, like, I, and then I tried to tell her I wanted to live there, and then I told her that I lived there. Yeah, he was. <laughs> <laughs> he goes. He's like, "What's your name? How are you?" And then she's like, "She's like, oh, you're visiting. Like, where are you visiting from?" And then John's like, "L.A." He's like, then he says, um, he says, uh, "I said vivo aquí, vivo aquí," <laughs> and she just looks at him. And just like stares. I said, no, John, you just said you live here. <laughs> <laughs> like you want to say like you want to live here. I live down the road. <laughs> so it was just She's like, like cool. Really? Huh. To like try to like. Think, I don't know. You know, it's something you don't think because like in America, you know, uh, there's so much Spanish sp speaking going on around here. But most everyone knows English. Right. And it's like such a. The way, what do they say? Like, if you uh, if you speak two languages, you're bilingual. If you speak one, you're American. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's really funny. What, actually, I mean, it's true for it, most. Well, everyone should. I mean, if you live in L.A., you should l know Spanish too. I think. I mean, yeah. I, I don't. Obviously. I wish I did. We're so close to Mexico. We're like what two hours, an hour and a half away. Well, like the amount of jobs that I've had here, where I've been like surrounded by everyone speaking Spanish and me not know what's going on has been, you know, I've been in a lot of those situations, but everyone has known, they've all known English super well too. Yeah. But this was like a situation where like I, like a lot of them knew English better than we knew Spanish, but it was still like, they weren't bilingual, you know? Some of them knew English better than I know English. That's true. Which I was like, well, now you're just kind of flexing on me. I, <laughs> this is, well, it's just kind of fun because they were struggling to, like, speak English with us. And then we would try to speak Spanish to them as much as we could. And we were struggling with that. And then you're just all on the struggle bus together. And it's it's, it's comedic. It it's bonds fun. you yeah. with people very, very quickly. But um, it's, like, amazing what you can figure out with people. Mm -hmm. With like, I learned how to order tacos in Spanish. There we go. Especially when they wouldn't give up. That was my favorite part. It's like Yeah, Alejandro did not give up with trying to get us to understand his Spanish. And we didn't give up with him trying to understand what we were saying either. Like, we didn't just go, never mind. Like, we were like, this is what we're trying to say. Whether we had to, like, point or, or really think about, like, those, those grade school days of what we learned in Spanish class. Like This is going to be very, very Whoa. strange. And I'm... I'm not looking at these things for any particular reason, but the dogs in Mexico had much larger <laughs> re reproductive organs than dogs. Because they're not neutered. I okay. I I yeah. The math, but like no one was like, okay, these dogs got hogs. Not one of you guys <laughs> thought these dogs got hogs. No, I, those dude, dogs I'm had not. Hogs. I am not checking out dogs. I'm not. See, John, that's why I didn't want to bring it up because now people are going to think that I'm attracted to dogs and I'm not. Uh, well, you might be. Yeah. No, okay. Well, well, we'll cross that path when we come to it. But <laughs> what I'm saying is I saw some dog hogs. You saw the dog hogs. Because you pointed out the dog hogs I thought we to both me. noticed it at the same time, like, that dog no, got a hog. That, these dogs had some wieners on them. <laughs> Thank you, Jared. They put the wiener in wiener dogs. 
That was, I'm going to give myself. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you, you can't. I absolutely, I have the soundboard. I have the power to but um tis myself. Okay, show this picture of uh, John really quick. I didn't get a picture of John. I got a video of myself. Oh, you didn't get a picture of John? What is this photo? Where's this? Just text me the picture. Okay. But here's the video that Zach sent. What is this? It's me. What? You like the party, don't you? I do like the party. This is getting on. You know. Okay, that wasn't a good video at all. Oh. I thought it was more. I thought he was like, you definitely smoke weed. And Jared's like, I don't smoke weed. He's well, like, you're going to smoke weed. And Jared's like, no. And I know if I would have <laughs> left you with him for five minutes, you would have been high because you can't say no. No, 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 no. He comes up to us. This was like, uh, I don't know, the third or fourth time that we were there. And he comes up to us and he's like, he's like, oh, do you guys smoke? And we're like, no. And he does one of these numbers. He's like, <laughs> You smoke. I was like, I don't though. And he's like, he's like, yeah, but you know how to party. And I, I was, that's why I I have to keep an eye on you because if I leave you with too many people that like to party, that guy's gonna get you to do stuff that you didn't know you were doing because you're like, I have to. He's like, Alejandro <laughs> did it. I have to. What? Tell him about the time that the guy came up to me and tried to sell me weed. And I didn't but, know what but, was going on. No, <laughs> no, no, no. We were at the bar and this guy comes up and he goes. Like you, you smoke. Like you, do you want weed? And he was just like, "How much?" Like you were actually gonna buy any? Yeah, I well, didn't know what he was. I didn't know what he was selling at first. Well, he, he had a joint in his in hand. his hands. I didn't see that at first. I was like, "What do you?" I was like, he, "How much?" He comes up and he has like these little vials with joints in them, and he's like, "He's like flowers." And I was like, no, See, we're good. I, I think that's what I heard. I didn't know I didn't process flowers with marijuana because I didn't really look and see what he was selling. So I was like, okay, what's going on? See, well, this is, we were, this is moments after you bought Indy this awesome headband. This little girl was the sweetest little girl, and she was selling these beautiful handmade headbands that I have on my head right now. And Zach was like, yeah, we'll buy one. And then um, I think a lot of them realized that we were going to be buying things from people, and then they all started coming up to us. So then we bought... Uh, this really cool handmade bag. It's all sage green. Um, I bought like bracelets and necklace from like yeah, I bought a lot down there. Yeah. Zach, I have well, a not these two. These are from picture Zach, but... that you wanted to pull up of John. What? Oh, here we go. <laughs> so this is how John rode around the town. It was a four seater golf cart, and we didn't want him to fall out, so we strapped him in like a spider web. Oh, these are the shirts we're wearing. John, that was that's one of my favorite pictures of you. Thanks, man. No, I got some photos to show. Oh goodness! Oh goodness! <laughs> I, I, I liked those uh, those outfits we were rocking. Oh, something else I want to highlight. Um, oh, we got scammed. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't oh, wait, get scammed. What? When Did we were you really on the, get scammed? No, we oh. didn't get scammed. We were offered on the plane. They're like, "We'll give you sixty thousand points if you put down your social security number and all your information and give it to this random guy." And John and I. Said, sign me we, up. We well, we thought we wanted to go back, and we, that would be a surefire way of. He like comes over. He's like, well, "I'll give you two plane tickets if you just fill out all this information." And John and I look at each other. Let's fill out the information. This guy seems trustworthy. We did not put our socials on it. Okay, so we just put other information. Other information. Just everything they could do to contact us. Well, he also gave me this uh, American flight crew uh, pen. That's pretty cool because you just skipped right past like all the college classes and stuff and you're part of the crew now. Yeah, I'm part of the flight crew. And I was wearing this pen when we met the guy at the house and he said, oh man, are you a pilot? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, I'm on the flight crew. <laughs> um, they even held my hand and let me see inside the plane, inside the cockpit. A lot of <laughs> buttons. Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, uh, John, you're so dainty. You've got such a feminine masculinity to you that's really... Rival, <laughs> oh yeah, that's me. Um, look at that spider on the Why wall. Why do I look? I yeah. look forty-five in that picture. You look like you're having a good time. That's all that matters, John. That's a good one. That's a great one. We were in a music video. I felt like at that point. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening here? Um. Okay, this is us experiencing the town. Goes well with the buildings in the background. Is that your guys' wedding photo? Yeah. We're not getting married. We're el eloping. eloping. We did elope. That was a fun photo shoot. So, uh, what happened during your childhood that wasn't so good, John? What was your mom a sex therapist? My, she. W <laughs> <laughs> is my your mother, life literally the plot of Sex Education on Netflix? No, one hundred percent. My uh, my mother is a yoga therapist. Were your parents together or divorced? 
divorce. So yeah, sex education. Wait, oh, I thought she was a yoga therapist for sex addicts. She was. She is a yoga therapist for those. Uh, Sorry, I am rehabilitation for sexual addictions. Thank you. She still do that. And yeah. what does that what does that entail? What is the job? Um, a lot of it's pretty private. I um, thought you were gonna say primal, and I was like, John, <laughs> don't you do it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of. Uh, she'd be a great guest on here. What I would love to have her on. Mm-hmm. How quickly can we fly her out? I don't know. She's coming to visit in October. Oh my God! She's coming. We're on. having John's mom on. Keep her away from Jared. <laughs> I do have a problem with moms. Um, just she uses like a lot of techniques within yoga to help people with addictions. It's there's a lot of uh, healing elements to the practice that are really valuable. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a curated enough nice, answer? <laughs> nice pitch. Oh my you were God. like you were like dancing around the anyway. That Jared. is the most textbook answer. I think I've ever heard. I don't well, think we've talked about this sign behind you enough. It looks beautiful. Oh, yeah. The little menu sign. It looks really good. Thank you. Um, Zach found... Zachary. Christian Justice. Mm. What? Yes. Yes, that's your name. Um, Ow. Uh, you found you found a, uh, a menu um, from, I don't know, some real restaurant. Um, and then I took that picture of said menu... And I photoshopped all the other words out from it, like the actual words and the pictures on it. And then I made little sections for um, the three of us. So we have the swag daddy section with a picture of you. And then we have the team whole milk section with a p- picture of me. And then we have a B word section with a picture of Indy. And then we have the specials right here, which is um, a lot of the, the guests that we've had at this point. Um, and then like the episode that they like first appeared in and like the, the view counts of those episodes. Um, and then we had the dropouts, just desserts, which is like our three, like, like the, the trifecta of stories that we always seem to come back to. What so do we, we usually have, talk about, uh, the beach. Okay. Um, uh, the Snickers deluxe. What happened there? Um, nothing. Uh, just had a really good candy bar. Um, and then we have, uh, the breakdown banana split. Um, is that, I don't be- know. I think just because you. What used is the breakdown banana split? I think because like remember every week like you'd come like you you talk about your breakdown. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, I remember. It was very special. It was a it was a big thing to continue co- to continually come on this podcast and be like, what a fucking week. Yeah. It, since you've been happy, it's kind of really just fucked made our, our views. content gone down. <laughs> so <laughs> sorry. You, yeah. Let me just. Oh, oh! I can talk. I had a panic attack yesterday. We can talk about that if we really want to. Yeah, more drama and sadness would be great for the yeah, viewers. Gotcha. Here, uh, this is something traumatic that happened to me as a kid. What? <laughs> this um, is what I like, John. So, my sister and I, there was this like thing like Chuck E. Cheese in our hometown gotcha. called Jungle Zone. Okay. And we both had this really vivid memory of being left at Jungle Zone. Okay. So you guys were there by yourselves. <laughs> like our dad left us there. Okay. And I've got a similar story, but it probably they, doesn't end the same way. Go ahead. <laughs> and like they, like in our minds, we're in the play pit. They're like making announcements that it's closing down. Like somehow I get stuck in the ball pit. Ugh. And anyway, like our dad leaves us. Like this is like a very vivid memory that we both share. All right. But it absolutely did not happen. <laughs> <laughs> So my sister and I at some point schemed up this fake traumatic event of being left at a at a Chuck E. Cheese type place. What was the point of you guys making this up? I don't know, but we're on our way to a family reunion, and apparently it was becoming a thing. And my dad was like, "Do not tell the Jungle Zone story." <laughs> He's like, "That did Wait. not happen," and and he said it 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 is not a good reflection on us as a family if you tell that story to people because it's not true. So we we had this like horrible graphic like he left us there we were stuck inside the ball pit he they turned out all the lights we got out we ran into the parking lot and he was gone and it didn't happen. Well, so but so you just point, wanted to make people think that you had a bad father? I don't uh, know. Yeah, uh, well, we at what point kids. did you and your sister come up with this idea? Did your mom and dad get story? divorced? Yeah. Was it was this around that time? I don't Oh, yeah. maybe Wait. subconsciously you were mad at your dad because of the divorce and you For wanted and you 
imagine that as him leaving the family is him leaving you like he abandoned you so the jungle I, yeah, the jungle zone is so fun and it's like everything was great there but why did you leave dad this is getting uh, this, is, this, this is, is getting really deep in <laughs> i've really been left at school before i don't think that really yeah many times i my my parents divorce was very clean clean okay it was beautiful very cordial but that doesn't mean but that your that young mind didn't get imaginative exactly cuz Maybe the jungle zone was at home. Because regardless <laughs> if it was. <laughs> <laughs> you ever think about that, John? Wait, what? Look, uh, <laughs> this is like. <laughs> okay, but here's the thing. Regardless. Did your parents fight a lot as a kid? I Look. <laughs> look. It, it it happened. It was fine. Gotcha. Like we're, all okay. ch- it's, we're all chilling. Okay. So Why'd your mom you and dad like, can be in the same room. Yeah. Like we we all do holidays together now. Nice. Oh, that's cute. So like my dad and his wife and my mom and her husband and his kids like we'll do group things. We all get that along. Must be nice. It, it is very nice. I'm very blessed. Do you think it would be easier to get my parents to back together or your parents? <laughs> <laughs> why is like that? Like why is question? I think no. it'd be easier to make a pig fly than do I. No, 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 no. no. This, okay, completely different question. We don't have to get into the politics of all that. That's dirty. That's messy. Okay, out of our four parents, which would be the best together? That wasn't already a couple. My your mom, mom and you. Did your mom have a lot of anxiety? No. Like then your like, mom and my dad. Okay, let's try to make it happen. No. All right, <laughs> never mind. Is your dad pretty strict? No. He's, he treats his women like queens. Now. <laughs> Does, really? Is your dad going to watch this? No. Actually? <laughs> what huh? if he did? No, my dad, my dad treats his women like queens. Like... Mm. In, in his later years. He really does. Promise. What? Then maybe my mom needs a lot of appreciation and a lot of validation. So Just pull. But pull okay, switch this room. is how I think. I think they would clash in the kitchen because he always wants to cook. And I feel like she'd be like, I want to. No, my, that wouldn't cook. My mom likes to bake. Oh, then it'd be the perfect combo. We could have a little brother. <laughs> All right. Or sister. Um, <laughs> John is perplexed. He's like, y'all just say stuff. I'm just like baffled by the lack of filter. Wait, John, have you, I mean, John, Jared, have you, can one of you guys change it's your names? A, I it's mean, obviously close. we'd never try to get our parents together, John. I know, but like. <laughs> I know. And the viewers know that. What if they, I don't know. Look, leave a comment if you ask. <laughs> okay, so you spoke about a ball pit. It just, have you talked about your ball pit story? Yeah. Okay, never mind. Uh, quickly, Jared pooped in a ball pooped pit. Yourself in a ball pit. Yeah, on on an accident what? ship. <laughs> yeah, I was young. Um, <laughs> this was. He's like, like, yeah, a year ago. Close that. <laughs> they would have had to close it down. Oh, well, trust me, they did. No, they didn't. The, what? Oh. You left like a Stanley lunch. steamer. You no, I didn't like pull my pants down and poop in it. But like, I was all contained. I just, yeah, like I just shit my I pants just, in I it. I just imagine you just struggling to get out, just like. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it was it was kind of like it was like the child equivalent of uh quicksand, you know, like just yeah. trying to get out of there. Um and then that was that was a tough walk back to the cruise How ship do you go room. did you go up to your mom? Um I honestly don't think I told her. Were, I, you, were you a big I don't feel good can I come sleep in your room mommy as a child? No, I was. I was not. I was not. Any opportunity I could have to like Sleep in my mom's bed. That's not weird, right? No. no okay. As a kid, it's fine. Okay, okay, okay. Well, this if was this last, is week. last Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> uh, no, I, I was, for some reason, I just, I was very codependent. I was like, mom, can we just, I well, think, I think I had a nightmare, but I also didn't sleep, so there's no way it could have happened. That's but one thing that your mom always talks about. It was is how loving and sweet you were as yeah, a kid. Yeah, I'm very independent now. Uh, yeah, and she's like, she's like, I don't know when the switch was, but I just want my sweet baby boy back. <laughs> but also, yeah. I was like, the one. Gina, she's like, he used to hug me and love me all the time, and he you gotta come sleep with me, and I'd be like, no, I was pretty codependent. I would say I was pretty, I was pretty much like that with my dad, though. My dad would travel a lot for work, so anytime he was in town, oh my gosh, any excuse I got to do anything with him, whether it was go to Bunnings, go to the grocery store. I want to be a dad. <laughs> I've, I've said this a million times. You're bred to be a dad. You got your fanny pack on lock already. <laughs> Dude, just you look you, right now with John 14, you look like you are a parent at a, just coming from a PTA meeting. I know you guys like are at both, a new school. I know you guys are both heterosexual males, you and um, Jared, but I do think you guys would 
fit very well together. Your your dynamics for raising a child. So I don't know if there's like co-parenting as friends. Really? For raising a child. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah Are yeah, you good yeah. with conflict, John? Yeah. I, yeah, I feel like you could oh. be stern and be like, no, this is the way it is. And Jared can provide like, oh, you got an A, let's put it on the fridge. You know what I mean? <laughs> I feel like I'm good with conflict. I feel like that's relative though. I know? feel like Zach is also, as my, I feel like you two are definitely bred to be dads. Like I just can see it from a mile away. But I we can never breed and then become dads, right. you and I. I think <laughs> that you would be a phenomenal dad, but I can't necessarily see you as a dad right now. But I think that you would be a phenomenal dad. And well, I, this is a I weird just time to announce that I have a child on the way <laughs> with I three have, different women. I have fun <laughs> on energy. That's all I have. You have fun on energy. Yeah, I don't really I have. You'd be a great mom. Just the, the blank stare. No, y'all disagree. No. Yeah, they one hundred percent. She's disagree. very generous. She's very kind. She's very present. She's very engaging. She's very. She has a lot of wonderful qualities that I think would be great for parenting. Jared? Huh? I no, I, I think she does. Thank you, John. And I You're think welcome. she does. I think that at at times, like if, if the kid <laughs> if the kids set you off, sometimes sometimes, sometimes you um are like a, a I will admit I have a switch. Well, I, I mean we all have switches. But, but I have an intense switch. That's very it's me too. No, I know, but it's it's hard to believe, I know, but you have a switch? You push my buttons. Why are you only staring at me? See, my thing is, <laughs> my <laughs> thing is, it's like definitely something that I'm like, I mean, I'm obviously in therapy to like sort it out. I was surrounded by so much conflict in my life that that's all I'm really used to. Well, I think you're like really self-aware and like the way you talk about things that you're like struggling with or like things that are going around you, like the way you break it down in your head is like very pragmatic and like you pinpoint like where you've fallen short what the other person's doing. Is well, that's what, that's what you. she said. She's like, after, like this year I learned what self-awareness yeah, was. Yeah, like that, that self-awareness has only become a part of who I am as a person in the last year. That's wonderful. Which is, yeah, it's definitely wonderful, 100%. But I do, I do want to talk about that. What, what do you notice now about yourself and the world and now that you've, as you've said, developed the self-awareness? Not saying you didn't have it before, but maybe it's heightened now. Um... I probably need to dip soon. No worries. That's fine. Um, you doing um, in the lip or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wait, dude. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, 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 you're good. Go ahead. I think that a lot of my self awareness has come from like, oh God, I don't know. It was more. I was so focused on like I was going through a really really shitty time period in my life, and I was so focused on how that was affecting me because it was severely affecting me mentally, physically, like. I was, like, physically getting sick from how stressed and just depressed I was. And I completely forgot to take a look outside of my own box and, like, view how this was affecting the people closest to me who genuinely care about me. Like, Zach, Jared, my mom, like, my dad, my grandparents. Like, I completely forgot that, like, I view, like, I thought... Oh my gosh, when I see these people hurt, it severely affects me. So imagine how they're feeling right now. Yeah. That's when I started to take like a switch. And then when Jared got punched in the face, like, and was physically injured by that Not situation. Injured. Not injured. Sorry, he wasn't hurt at all. You should have seen the other guy. Yeah, he was, on the f- he was on the floor unconscious. I there you go, Jared. Well, it wasn't me. But Jared, we'd have to include that. Sorry. Regardless, once I started to see that this was severely like affecting their physical health now and not only their physical but their mental i was like this is where my switch needs to begin and that's where my self-awareness started to kick in where it was just like you know what you're doing because it used it never felt like what i was doing was wrong before or every time i would go back to him or the situation it never felt like i was doing anything wrong it was like it'll be better it'll be better it'll be better it'll be better and then once that switch happened it was like you know what you're doing is wrong and you know what you're doing is not only going to hurt you but it's going to hurt everyone else in this situation but it was like an addiction. I know I have a very addictive personality and that person was my was my cocaine, was my heroin, was my drug. And I kept going back. I kept going back. I kept going back until like at some point I lost the high for him and I was like, you are just the the worst. I'm not even getting the good parts of this high anymore. You are just tearing me down so, so bad mentally 
And I learned to have enough self-respect for myself and have enough self-awareness about the situation to be like, this is not something that I can do. Like, I can't do this anymore. And it still was like one of the most painful things I've ever had to deal with in my life was stepping away from somebody that, because I was constantly like thinking of the good. I was constantly being like, you used to be this person. You used to be this person. You used to do these incredibly nice things and be this incredibly nice person. What the fuck happened? Like, how could this be so different now? But like, once I accepted that people change, people are completely different people from the ages of like, you know, 14 to 20. Like you are completely different people. And I was like, you're just not a good person now. Like you were just a completely different human being and I don't know you anymore. Yeah. So once I established that you are now a stranger to me, and I no longer care about what you're doing or who you are. And I literally look at a photo or a thing of you and I'm like, yeah, I don't know you. You're a stranger to me. Like, I, I don't know who that is. Was the minute I could be like, goodbye. Okay. Now to bring it to a lighter note, talk Sorry about, about the, that. No, to talk about the addiction part. Um, you had Coke for the first time on your birthday for what? Months? Coca-Cola. Uh, it had, Coca-Cola. It had been months. Sorry, like, Coca-Cola. We all know how very addictive. That was like... <laughs> That was a terrible transition. <laughs> talk about addiction. You had Coke. First <laughs> Sorry. I um, honestly was thinking about Coca-Cola. Um, I uh, obviously, I, I also think a strong part of my caffeine addiction came from just me never getting sleep for a couple of the, for about a year or two. Feel just because I needed to like, I also didn't want to sleep because every time I slept, it was just sad, whatever. Um, So I, Coke, not Coke, but like Coca-Cola. Cola. Coca-Cola was something that, like, I was absolutely addicted to and would get everywhere. That and Red Bull and energy drinks. The kind, kind soul that sent us that beautiful little stuffed animal next to the bear. Um, and, like, a bunch of candy. Thank you. You know who you are. We really, really appreciate We have a P.O. Gifts. box. Thank you no, to everyone don't. that sends us. Oh, we don't have a P.O. box. No, don't send us it. stuff anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Why did anybody update me? They sent me Red Bull. And I miss it. Um, but anyway, I had Coca-Cola for the first time in months. And it doesn't hit the same. It, so well, it doesn't. It was a different. It was it was a different kind of coke. It's one of my favorite kinds of coke is Mexican coke. We've had this. All right. We have had this talk, and I love Mexican coke, and I know I love. What's Mexican your coke. What's your coke tier list? My coke tier list: movie theater coke, no. fast food coke, twelve ounce can coke. Number three is glass bottle American coke, and like the ones you get like at Christmas with the polar bears on them. And then number five. I don't have a number five pass. So I just have four. Or like the Mexican I, Coke. I don't like Mexican Coke. Okay. Like the Coca Chipotle, I don't like that. But I like the fountain Coca Chipotle. Okay, tell them yours. McDonald's Coke is superior and will always be superior. McDonald's fountain Coke is amazing. Number two, okay. any kind of fountain Coke. Any any Coke that comes out of like the fountain thingies, number two immediately. Number three, Mexican Coke of any kind. It's incredible. It's so good. Number four, any form of, no, number, sorry, sorry, number four is any bottled Coke. Number five is any canned Coke. See, I don't like plastic bottled Coke. I don't mind it. It's sweeter. I just it didn't hit for me. I have a sweet tooth. Okay, well, we have similar Coke preferences. I just, like, think movie theater Coke is better than McDonald's Coke. I would never get movie theater Coke because I would always get Slurpees. Right, we yeah, had the discussion. Yeah, yeah. Um, regardless, I had it for the first time. I had soda for the first time in Mexico in months, and it just doesn't hit the same for me anymore. All right, I probably do need to head out. Okay. You're good. You- thank you, John, for stepping in and explaining this Mexico trip, and thank you for well, being Honestly, it's probably time. We can probably wrap it up here, too. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you stayed till the end, uh, make sure to... DM John um, a picture of Jared. Um, <laughs> that would really mean a lot to me, just so he can have more for his his bank, as the kids say. Uh, Thank you guys so much for watching this week's episode of Dropouts. I'm Indiana. That's Zach Justice. That's Jared Brand Music. This is John Brand. We'll see you guys next week for another episode of Dropouts. Bye. And oh, look, wait, 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 Jared, board. Jared, tell him about board. tell him about your series. My series? Before it's over. We, you can do it now. Tell You got that series. Tell me you got Oh, it. the TikTok series? Yeah. Check out my TikTok uh, remixing songs that don't need to be remixed. I'm coming out with... And you're about to new, do... I'm about to do a little Huddy. Don't freak out. So don't freak out when it comes out. Bye. Bye.